Hey, what's going on guys? It is Foxy Knight here and welcome to the start of my Mercedes AMG Patronus F1 Team 2021 modded career mode. If you guys end up enjoying today's video and end up enjoying today's series, I mean, drop it a like and subscribe if you're new around here as well. We're going to get straight into things and uh, I put a poll out um, about a week or two ago now um, asking what you guys fancied me doing. I was either going to do a modded career mode with Valtteri Bottas or I was going to do a driver career mode with Mercedes and the majority of you picked to do a driver career mode with Mercedes. So that's what we're going to do. So let's get straight into it then. Uh, we're going to pick Mercedes-Benz and obviously we can pick our teammates and I'm picking Lewis to be my teammate. Now, for the series, we're going to be doing 16 races and I'm going to go ahead and quickly jumble up the tracks that I want to do. Um, so I'll be back with you once I've picked those. All right, so I've literally, all I had to do was just change one circuit. So we'll be doing Bahrain, China, Netherlands, Spain, Monaco. Then we'll be doing Canada, Austria, Silverstone, then we'll be doing Belgium, Italy, Singapore, Russia, Japan, USA, Mexico, and Brazil. So I'm happy with that. So we're gonna get shy, I've got to start all these now, great. We'll do, we're doing 50% races. We're doing the full qualifyings. I don't know what AI to go on to, because I haven't played in so long. Shall I start on like one, let's start on 105. If the first round's too easy, I can always change it. That's not really a problem of mine. Um, I've got to change all my assists as well. All right, there we go. Assists and all that stupid, boring setting stuff changed. Uh, we're gonna be starting things off in the headquarters. Okay, cheeky, cheap bit of headquarter work. Let's see what we got going on. Okay, right. So, ooh, we've got 2,750 resource points to use. Oh, Toto's giving me a message. Welcome to the team. Between yourself and Lewis, I'm sure we can have a fantastic season. My door's always open if you need anything. Oh, can I get like some crisps or something? I'm quite hungry right now. I could do some of that. Um, so what we got? We've got a little bit of time for the Bahrain Grand Prix. So let's have a look at the let's have a look around. So we've got wow, max resource point generation on the powertrain. Great to overall, everything's just great. Jesus, 560 resource points a week. Damn! We're gonna be going in, right? So what do we want to do then? So we can do wow, everything's major upgrades. Jesus Christ. Um, we could do a gearbox one, which will then get me... There's no, like, general durability, which is interesting. I thought there might have been a general one. So we could do a minor weight reduction. Right. Oh, we're actually a little bit behind Rebel on that front, but it is 1,000 R&D points. That's 2,000 R&D points, but I don't need to change the engine. Rebel have got a better chassis and aero department. I mean, from knowing where we go, we need to get this onto the car before the Bahrain Grand Prix. Fall short, and then what we need to do is skip one event so I can get the weekly resources in now and then stop and then we can go ahead and we'll chuck on this drag upgrade as well boom oh, what's the percentage oh, 45 I don't really want to risk it not coming on I'll I'll happily wait till till afterwards but we're gonna go into the car reveal now um, so let's showcase the Mercedes W12 ish Okay, so here's our Mercedes W12-ish. Made a few little changes to it, literally just where the grey stripe is on the current W12, I changed that to the Petronas blue stripe, and then where the Petronas blue stripe is originally, I changed it to white with a bit of an outer glow of blue, just to, I don't know, make it, that was probably the only things that was a bit like, when I saw the uh, W12, but we're gonna advance time though, hopefully this cable assembly, oh, there we go, it does. Perfect, and then we're gonna get a whole bunch of resources, which are great. We're gonna need those. Um, and then bish bash bosh, we're off to Bahrain. Season objectives. We're confident that the car will be competitive from the start to the season, so we expect you to be nice and racing near the front of the field. Well, we say that, but you know, we can bottle it. So now, oh, Red Bull have brought upgrades too. Let's get straight into the weekend, uh, and we'll see how things go down. What I'm gonna do quickly though is I've got about like two million in my bank, so I'm gonna to go to power mapping, or do I wanna do resource point income and just bang out the route? Nah, we'll do power mapping. So we'll reduce the engine wear, and then we've got 70K left over. So crucial one that we put that onto the car, and we can go into the weekend now. Great, you're done with the technician's briefing. 
Look, I know we've got a lot to get through in FP1, but Will Buxton's been pushing for a quick interview before you head out on track. Now, don't worry too much. He's a good lad. He's just over there. These media appearances are important for a few reasons. They'll help build your profile and your brand. Plus, your team will get a real boost to their motivation if they hear you praising them. Will, as promised, sorry to keep you waiting. Ah, oh, mate, not a problem <laughs> at all, not a problem. Look, we've got to be out on track in about five minutes for FP1, so we can only spare you a couple of minutes, max. Is that going to be enough time? More than enough, we're already set up. Cool, let's go. We're used to seeing rookies in Formula One every year. But this season, there's a youngster that's arrived with perhaps a little more interest in them than usual. And that's because while they've been successful at every level of their career from karts all the way through to Formula Two, they've somehow managed to stay pretty much under the radar. They don't have that luxury anymore though. They're in Formula One. Millions of people around the world watching their every move both on and off the racetrack. So let's take some time to get to know them a little bit better. So tell us a little about yourself. What's the thing you're most excited about being here in Formula One? I wouldn't really say that I'd be under the radar. I've just signed for Mercedes-Benz. <laughs> but, but no one knew. Um, yeah, let's have a look. Uh, what am I excited about? Being in the fastest, F2 as quickly as a whole other level. Become the best. That's, that's literally why people aspire to be anything in life. Um... Oh, what's this car got that's just pure, absolute sexiness? Oh, it's got a sensational chassis. What do you think your prospects are for the season? Are you aiming just for points? <laughs> this season, I'm aiming for points in a Mercedes. No, I am going to be champion. That's the aim, anyway. If I don't, then I am literally Valtteri Bottas in disguise. All right, cheers, buddy. Bye. Right, so I'm pretty sure you guys might know, but basically I don't tend to do practice because it's just straight up boring, so I'm going to be skipping all of those. So in terms of how we get things done, in terms of learning our way around the circuit, it's done through qualifying. So yeah, pretty much just going to skip through this now. It should give me our R&D points and we can get into qualifying then. There we go. Oh wow, it doesn't give me any... Wow. Oh, I tell you why. It's because I didn't simulate session. I just said skip to practice. Oh, bollocks! <laughs> I just missed out on so many R and D points. Oh, that's a massive rip. Oh dear. Well, that's awkward. <laughs> Right, time to get some qualifying under our belt then. So we've got obviously Q1, Q2 and Q3. We've got three sets of softs and a set of medium tyres. Um, so without further ado, we're just going to go and set our first lap of the weekend and hopefully have some fun with it and see how we get on. And across the start finish line and it is going to be P1 for the time being. I'm quite happy with that lap as well at 25A. Could have been worse. The problem I had really was that the rear end was very snappy and the front left is starting to get a little bit warm if we look at it now. Might have to drop the tyre pressures. Okay, so we're through into Q2. Uh, Hamilton's at the fastest lap, half a second quicker than we did. He's at 25.2. Uh, Verstappen and then Leclerc and then ourselves and then it's Ricardo. Um, so that's what the top 20 like in terms of who went out. Grosjean, uh, Russell, the two Alfa Romeos and Latifi went out, which is kind of expected. But this is where... I want to take my gamble. Um, I want to start on the medium tyres for this race. It's just the fastest strategy. If you do mediums to hards around here, you're just so much quicker than everyone else. It's going to be risky, but I want to try and take the risks. So we're going to do it, and then we're going to just litter the car with no fuel and give it a go. That lap was horrible. The car is so oversteery. It's a joke, and I can't fix it. It's actually frightening as we just crossed the line there for Q2. It's, fr it's frightening, frighteningly how accurate the, this Mercedes feels to the W12. The rear end is so unstable. I can't live with it. And I'm four tenths down. I mean, Verstappen and Albon aren't exactly any quicker, but I'm four tenths down. And it's 
it's all in the middle sector, I'm sure of it. I couldn't make it work on the mediums, which sucks. Lewis with a 27.5, that was a 27.5. He's then done a 36.5, I've done a 36.8, and then I've done a 21.2 and a 21.0 for Lewis. So I've got him matched in the first sector, I just can't match him in the final two sectors. And on the run up the hill towards turn 13, I think it is, that high speed turn 12, I can't even take that flat because the car, the back end, steps out on me. Horrible feeling. But we're into Q3, we've got two sets of tyres, so we can still do two runs. Um, just so sucks that I couldn't get out of there on the mediums, but... We'll have to live with it, but we're going to get going. Flipping hell, I can't even beat Perez. Wow, okay, this is really concerning. It's a 26 0, it's not even as good as my lap in. Uh, what's it called? In Q2. It was slower, in fact, and the staff. Bloody hell, I got. Mate. Am I finding seven tenths of a second? No. Oh god, this is gonna be bad. Less than a lap. Right, this is it. This lap or nothing. One minute remaining, just one minute. It's been an absolutely sensational lap. I don't know where this has come from, but it's our best lap of the weekend. It's not going to be pole position, though, but it will be a front row start. Do you know what? I'm taking it. I'm taking it 100%. Like, the whole session of qualifying was just super messy. Oh, you're, oh, you're taking the piss. Is it five one thousandths? What? Oh, for God's sake. Seriously? <laughs> Where did I lose time, man? Where did I lose the time? Right, he set a 20... What was his best lap? It was on his first flying lap, actually. So he set a 27.411. 27.488. He's quicker in the first sector. A 36.541. And I did a 36.589. So I'm slower again in the middle sector. And a 21.0. And then a 20.9. So I gained it back in the last... Do you know what? I don't even care. It's a great qualifying session. It's a front row lockout for Mercedes. That's the most important thing. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. An immense lap from Lewis Hamilton yesterday puts him on pole position. And Thomas completes the front row. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Albon, Sergio Perez, and Norris, Sainz, Ricardo, Vettel, and Charles Leclerc, Stroll, Ocon, Pierre Gasly, and Kvyat. Magnussen, Rojan, George Russell, and Kimi Raikkonen, Giovinazzi, and Nicholas Latifi. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out. Then let's see who can prevail to the... Right, so we're on the grid then. Um, I actually forgot to mention, um, it actually just reminded me now that we just went through the cutscene there. Um, the only thing uh, from the 2021 mod that I was not able to do is all of the suits, like the race suits, etc., as you would have seen for the cutscene. Every time I tried to do it, it just broke my game. Um, so I was just like, I just abandoned using them. So it's the 2020 race suits, but you know, it's a 2021 mod. So it's a little bit mixture of both, but 
Yeah, so obviously because we couldn't do the strategy that I wanted to, we have to start on the soft tires and go medium, medium, which is fine. Um, I'm hoping that the others do medium hard and I can gain some time back that way. But what I need to do is get a good start, get composed and try and take the fight at the front. So let's get straight into it and see if we can get the start that we're looking for. So here we go. Lights out. That's the start I wanted. Perfect getaway. And I can take the inside. Whoa, rear end, stay with me, buddy. Perfect. Literally the perfect start. Couldn't have asked for a better one there. We've got the lead. Now we need to keep it. Track extension, but it's absolutely fine. Lewis Hampton did it 29 times. We've got 29 laps in this race, so hey. I could probably do it that many times, it'd be fine. Now the AIs are going to have a roundabout, I think it's till lap 3 when DRS is enabled, where they're at max power, so I just need to hold on till then, really. Hamilton's all over the back of me now. I literally cannot slow the car down into any corners. He's going to go for it. You can do that, Sunshine. Gonna have a run up towards turn four though. Oh, I've missed a gear. That's the point though. He's got no power anymore. This is where I should theory be more comfortable, but I can't work with this car at the moment. It's just so oversteery. I'm in a bit of a rock and a hard place here. I mean, Lewis is still on my back, but. I'll have like one or two really good corners and pull out like a gap. And then all of a sudden I'll just have like a whole bunch of shocking corners. And it leads to where I'm at now. Which is in a fight here that I don't really want to be in and a part of. Still gonna fight it though. There you go. Right, we're coming in now. Let's get, just get me off these tyres, please. That's all I request. <laughs> it's just, these tyres are just terrible. Hopefully I don't get held by L1 here. No, I won't. And then I'll have a nice clean exit as well. It's a bit of a dainty pit stop. l going to get held, though. No, Verstappen's going to get held by Vettel and also Ricardo there. So, rip to you, my friend. And we're going to hopefully get out. No, we're not going to get out in front of clean air. We're going to get out in a lot of traffic. Great. Right next to Kafiat and Russell. Not what I intended. I need to pass these two ASAP. Right, I didn't expect Kafiat to break so early. But, fine. <laughs> Thanks for the position. Bit rough. I wasn't expecting it to be that rough. I wasn't anticipating it to be that rough. It just turned out to be rough. But it doesn't matter. Lewis is coming in now. I'm just so cautious with every turn of the wheel. You could even see then how the car was starting to just get away from me a bit. But Lewis is in. He's probably going to get held by sights though. I think he did actually, I think he got held by signs. They're coming out of the pits like now. And we are still ahead. Critical that we got past Russell when we did then. Oh hello. Lewis is on a fresh set of soft tires. Okay. I mean it's a definite two stop from him, but he's doing a different strategy. Is that soft, soft medium, or is that soft, soft hard from Lewis? Either way, he's going to be right on my gearbox anytime soon. Oh, 
don't know what you expect me to do with Hamilton on his soft tyres. Do I just let him go? I might as well. He's on a faster tyre compound. There's no point in fighting it. I'm going to play it smart. As I need to go into the back of him there. And he's away. I'm just going to have to follow him now. Fiat has a problem. God, everyone breaks so early into T4. And then he went into the back of Lewis then. I've kept myself in DRS range of Lewis. He's going to pass Gasly now. And he's just at the fast lap of the race in the process. I'm just going to let him part. He's going to have a tough time doing it, actually. I don't think he got it done, actually. No, he did. He got DRS as well. God, this is awkward for me. I'm trying to... I'm trying to get involved in that, but Lewis is through. Now I've got to be patient. And strike now. Gasly's going to give me a whack. I thought he might. But we're through. We're past Pierre Gasly, which was crucial. I need to stay as close to as Lewis as I possibly can, now that he's on this... Very weird strategy. How have I not got DRS on him? I'm a second back. Okay, I have to push hard. Hmm. Interesting for Lewis to go for it in the final corner. I would not go for it there. I nearly just gave Ock on a smack. Please tell me Lewis has got DRS. Okay, he does. It means I can get past Ock on quick. I'm going to get past Lewis as well. This is unexpected. Might as well. Just annoys Lewis a bit more. None of us have got DRS on the run up towards turn four. <laughs> You're literally side by side. Well, there we go. We're back into the lead. Lewis's soft tyres will start fading as well, which is crucial. All right, we've just now set the fast start of the race. I'm closing up to straw, not in DRS range yet. By the time we get to the exit of this turn one, we should be though, because we're less than a second back. And we are. So we're still keeping Hamilton at bay. But for how much longer? I don't know how much longer I can do it. But we're also... Pulling away from the Red Bulls behind. Which is great. I think one of them is actually completely stuck in traffic. Stroll's got a massive snap of oversteer out to the to turn 12. It's like me all race long. I'm going to be patient here on Stroll. I'm going to wait till the start finish straight and then pass him. No need to do it now. To use some ERS to pass him, but we will do. Traditional, we go wide. He's going to be back on my tail again. He has got DRS. I'm towards turn four. I'm able to just shut that line off. Now Lewis can have the fun of following Stroll for a while. I'll be on my way. Hmm. I'm perplexed on Lewis's strategy here. He stays out for another lap. It's gaining on me though. And again I can't slow this freaking car down into turn one. Gasly pits behind for a set of hards presumably. We've got him covered up towards turn four. Yep. When's Lewis going to pit? Is he going to do a two stop but do soft soft mediums? He got the tie wear to do it. Alright here comes Lewis. Nothing I can really do about it. Yeah, he's, I'm approaching pit window and Lewis hasn't even stopped yet. And I still can't stop into turn one. I mean, just like, honestly, like Lewis is just too, too quick for me today. But I'm just struggling with the whole feel of this car. 
I can't break into corners. I've got no grip. I've got no confidence. Right, finally Lewis Pitts. Now, crucially, this is on lap 16. Lewis Will Lewis go to hard tyres? If he does, I might be in the box seat. Let's find out. No, he goes mediums. Oh, he did do soft, soft, medium. Wow. You might have just completely played me on strategy, and he's going to have clean air as well. Wow. I might have just been outdone. Oh my god, there is a yellow flag. Ocon's out. Please. No. It would have come up by now. God, you <laughs> You tease me, Formula One. Tease me, God, these bastards. Right, well, coming in at the end of this lap anyway now. I was hoping it would have given me a safety car, and I literally could have cheesed this entire race, but not to be, not to be. We're going to box now and get our mediums on, and we're going to go to the end. Unfortunately, I don't think I've got any pace to keep up with Lewis, so yeah, it's just going to have to be box, box, and hope for the best, really. So as we come out of the pits now, um, Lewis is now on the last corner, so he's going to rejoin, say, four or five seconds clear. It's pretty much just going to be me limiting the gap to, oh, there you go, 29 and 1, fastest lap, just to rub in salt into the, you know, into everything else. But there he goes. He is through. Oh, there we go, then, new fastest lap of the race here on lap 21, gap down to 2.7. This is going to be very tough to keep up with Lewis Hamilton, no mind. That literally took, like, one ultimate lap that I had to pull it out of the bag. I'm trying to do that and close the gap, it's not going to be easy. Alright then guys, we're coming towards the start finish. I'm actually kind of glad that this race is over. A, because, well, it's mostly because of just the game. It's become just so choppy and freezy. I think it's crashed about like, like there. I thought it was about to crash then. So, we're, oh my god, he's nicked fast lap on the last lap as well. Look at... <laughs> Please don't crash. Please. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. This game, man. This game is just crap. I think it's actually just frozen on me now. Please don't. I worked too hard to not have a finish. Please. Liz. Liz. It's like the moment of death. I've never had the game this choppy, but I was actually experiencing this type of choppiness for the last like seven laps. It was horrible. I'm hoping I'm actually able to stand on the podium at least. I think I'll be okay. I don't know who's driver of the day, Pierre Gasly. I'm very sorry for the quality, guys, but hopefully you can see now what I had to deal with. Just the extensive choppiness of this. I hope my recording's okay as well. I hope it's just the game and not my Elgato, because otherwise I'm in a ball of shit. Oh, and it clears that. Of course it does. Yeah. Great. Isn't it? Yeah. I'm celebrating in my car. <laughs> this game is so broken. Oh my god, why am I in my garage celebrating? Okay, so hopefully the game is now not going to kill me, but Hamilton obviously wins the Grand Prix by 6.2 seconds. He beat my fastest lap by two one hundredths on the last lap, so that's a bit of a ball ache there. Albon finishes in third ahead of Stroll, Gasly, Ricardo, Verstappen in P7. A bad result for him today, uh, Sainz, and then the two Ferraris in the top 10. Then it was Perez, Norris, Magnussen, Kvyat, Rojan, Russell, Giovinazzi, Raikkonen, Latifi, and Ocon. And, nope, the game is literally on the verge of crashing badly. Standings-wise, let's just try and get through this. Um, Lewis, obviously, lead, I mean, it's the top 10. What, what do you expect? Constructors-wise, obviously, it is max points for Mercedes. So we're on 44 points with Red Bull and Racing Point in behind. But we're going to move on now to the laptop and hopefully get the rest of this video done before my game crashes. Right, we are back at the laptop now. We've got a little bit of a turnover before the Chinese Grand Prix, which is great. So what we're going to do is invest. Uh, and what I want to do is I really want to get to these front and rear downforces. And to do that, I've got to make an upgrade to the drag. But I can also get a major weight reduction in time for the Chinese Grand Prix. And weight reduction is like one of the most overpowered things. We're going to put that onto the car. And then what we're going to do is we'll get all the resource points in uh, and then we will get the drag upgrade to go onto the car. And then, <clears throat> by that point, we'll stop it now actually so we can get through. 
and that's great. And then we're going to go and plop this onto the car. It'll come just in time for the Dutch Grand Prix. It's actually not too bad because the Dutch Grand Prix is quite a high-speed circuit. And then we can get into these front and rear downfall sections then where we can improve the overall balance of the car. But let's hope that this upgrade gets onto the car, which it does, which is beautiful. I genuinely don't give a damn about invitational events. Yeah, but guys, if you have enjoyed today's video, drop it a like, subscribe if you're new around here as well, and I'll see you next time. Peace.